Hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. Time for another thrilling installment of Bedtime Tales. Or aka random stuff some group of people wrote down and we are really enjoying. <laughs> is specifically Linda Jennings, illustrated by Hilda Offen. And let's start with camping. Oh joy. I did a lot of camping when I was younger. Max was fed up. He had had measles, which meant he couldn't go camping. Well, that sucks. So he moped round the house, getting under Mom's feet. It's not fair, he said. I feel lots better. Mom had an idea. She went into the garage and brought out an old tent that had belonged to Max's sister, Ruth. She set it up on the grass. Why don't you camp in the yard, she said. There's your tent, and this evening we'll have a real campfire. Later, Mom and Dad fixed up the barbecue on the patio. Then along came Aunt Meg, Uncle David, and Max's cousins, Harry and John. They cooked hot dogs and baked potatoes and hamburgers, and after supper, Dad got out his guitar and everyone sang campfire songs. Then Max, Harry, and John took their sleeping bags into the tent and listened to the grown-ups talking until the moon came up. Wow. Nice little quick story. Very quick story. Drawing's nice. Yep. There they are, in the tent. Oh, that is one of those old tents. Those are a pain to set up. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. Well, oh. remember when the book was published. Yeah. It was I, probably a new tent at the time. I actually set one of... Oh, my God, that took way too long. Mm -hmm. All right. About the right time of year for this one. The two fir trees. There were once two fir trees growing in the forest. One was tall and stately. The other short and sturdy. How elegant I'll look this Christmas, covered in tinsel and lights, boasted the tall tree. The little fir tree felt sad. No one would want her. She was too short and bushy. Soon the woodcutters came and cut down the big tree. The little tree shuddered when she heard the sound of the axe. It would be best to dig up this little one, not cut it, said the woodcutter. So the little fir tree was dug up and planted in a green pot. That Christmas, she found herself sitting on a windowsill, decked out with tinsel. After Christmas, she was planted in the yard, where she soon started to grow. The little fir tree never knew what became of the tall tree, but she grew more graceful every year, and was always dug up for Christmas. Always dug up for Christmas? Yes. Why didn't they just decorate it in the yard? And it's a nice picture of the tree, though it doesn't have tinsel on it unless... That's, no, it's obviously the smaller one. Yeah, because it's in a pot, and they only did lights and ornaments, no tinsel. And now, the incredible egg. Hmm. I'm suddenly reminded of all those commercials. Mm-hmm. What did your dad bring you back from vacation? Asked Mark. A great big pretend egg made from wood, said Sandy proudly. It's as big as a football, and so strong, you can stand on it. Let's paint it, shall we? When the two boys had finished, the egg looked exotic and strange like a wonderful Easter egg. Incredible, said Mark. Seriously, that is it. Also, I'm not used to Sandy being a boy's name. Mm, I've heard it both ways. Wow. Okay, let me... I think it went by so quickly my brain hasn't processed it, so I don't know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> okay, a painted egg. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They got an egg. They painted it. Wow. Okay. Wow. There's a Easter egg on that page. Just yeah, you'll see it on screen. Yeah. No, that's when they finished painting it. It looked like an Easter egg. Just okay. I guess that went by so quickly. My brain just did not even register it. Yeah. Oh wow. <laughs> yeah. The musicians of Bremen. Though in this book it's called Four Friends and the Robbers. Credited to Grimm. I think we all know what's going to happen in this one. Yep. Once upon a time, there were four animals. A donkey, a dog, a cat, and a cockerel. They had all been ill-treated by their owners, and one day they set off to find a new life for themselves. By and by, they came to an old cottage in the woods. Here's a good home for us, said the dog. But when the donkey peered in... He saw a gang of robbers, surrounded by their stolen treasures. We must stop them, he said. 
and the four friends made a wonderful plan for scaring the robbers away. The dog jumped on the donkey's back, the cat on the dogs, and the cockerel on top of the cat. Then all four brayed and barked and meowed and crowed. The robbers sprang to their feet and saw a terrifying shape at the moonlit window. Help! A monster! they cried, and they fled into the forest. Then the donkey, the dog, the cat, and the cockerel ran into the cottage and had the feast of their lives on the robbers' supper. And the four animals lived happily in the little cottage for the rest of their lives. How do they get more food? Also, if they were stopping the robbers, then isn't the next thing to return the stolen treasures? Because aren't the robbers going to come back? Also, everything in there is stolen. So you guys scared off the thieves and stole from the thieves. I think that's kind of okay to steal from thieves, but steal it to return it to whoever they stole it from. That's usually what you do in these stories. All right, now news day. Tomorrow is news day, said Mrs. Barton. I want all of you to come in with a piece of exciting news to tell the class. Debbie worried about news day all evening. Nothing exciting ever happened to her. She hadn't been given a pony for her birthday, and Spaceman hadn't landed in the yard. Nor had any robbers held up the bank on Main Street. Debbie walked slowly to school the next morning, still worrying. Help! somebody suddenly cried. I'm stuck! Debbie looked up. It was Kevin Powell, clinging, terrified, to one of the branches of the oak tree. He was very high up and looked as though he would fall at any moment. Get my mom or dad, called Kevin. They'll help me. Debbie ran up the street and banged on the Powell's door. Silly boy, said Mr. Powell, and took a ladder from the shed. By now a crowd had gathered by the tree. Kevin's dad leaned the ladder against the tree and climbed up until he reached the boy. Then he slowly brought him down to safety. Kevin grinned at Debbie. Thanks for saving me, he said. Debbie was late for school. Sorry I'm late, Mrs. Burton, she said, but something very exciting happened on the way here. Well, that was a nice, pleasant little story. It wasn't too quick. We had a nice little arc. Also, I'm thinking I'm going to go with the boy stuck in the tree for this one. <laughs> the main character is in the bottom left-hand corner, so maybe I'll take a picture of both. I've done that before with some of these stories. Well, we keep getting commenters on Ember's reading room asking for more pictures. Yeah, I, I try to keep that to a minimum for copyright reasons, because fair use doesn't allow you to use all of a thing to make your point. You can use clips, parts of... Which is why you normally only see the cover, and usually my avatar in front of it as well. So, yes, we know you guys would like to see all the pages, but... Copyright and fair use. Just because we're on the internet doesn't mean we're illegal. We would love to do it. It's just maybe if we become popular enough and we have money coming in for this show, we could actually buy some licensing. Then I would show all the pages. Ooh, I see a classic one coming up. Yes. Um, very, man, we are hitting this absolutely correctly for the time of year. The Missing Earring. It was Christmas morning and Mom was looking everywhere for one of her pearl earrings. I had it a few weeks ago, she said. Wherever can it be? Perhaps I should have asked for a new pair as a present. She was joking, but she was also upset. They were her best earrings. Christmas dinner was wonderful, with turkey and stuffing, and a special cake called Christmas pudding. A cake called Christmas pudding. Well, certain things can be a pudding and not be what we consider pudding. I know, like Purin, but still. There are six silver coins in the Christmas pudding, said Mom, so don't swallow them. I've found a coin, cried Michael, and your pearl earring. Thank you, laughed Mom. I must have stirred it into the batter. I've heard of this happening. Yeah, so have I. Also, I need to now look up how to make Christmas pudding because she said she had the earrings a few weeks ago, so is this one of those cakes that needs to sit? Or it can be made earlier and sit for a while. Oh, nice. And, and you're right, this is like, it's releasing close to Christmas, so this is perfect. Mm -hmm. And no, we didn't plan this. We've just been alternating books and reading through, so. You think we planned that far ahead? 
I mean, we do a little bit. We knew what books we were reading, but we didn't know the contents. You've seen how short these are. If I read ahead, I would have them all memorized. Cindy's Treat. It was Christmas Eve, and Cindy's Spaniel could smell something good. Her nose took her out of the kitchen and into the hall where the Christmas tree stood. Underneath it were four boxes of candy. Cindy had a very good nose for candy. It was her favorite treat. She ate it all, chocolates, candy canes, and mints. Afterwards, she felt just a little bit sick. On Christmas morning, the children gave Cindy a special bone-shaped parcel. By now, Cindy was feeling very sick indeed. Mom came into the bedroom really mad. I thought so, she said when she saw Cindy's unhappy face. Candy is for people. Bones are for dogs. Cindy agreed until she felt better. And then she ate her bone. And the moral of the story is don't feed chocolate to dogs. Seriously, it will make them very, very ill. This is wrong that they are even putting this in here. If they just would have left out the chocolate, chocolate just say candy. Me? Just do. No. But yeah. the art's nice. That tree is very lovely. Mm -hmm. All right, another classic. Credit to Anderson. The Princess and the Pea. There was once a prince who would marry only a real princess. There were many princesses around, but none of them delicate or sensitive enough for the prince's tastes. Then one day, a princess came to stay. She was as fair as the fairest flower. She could sing, she could dance, and her laughter was like silver bells. But is she a real princess? The prince asked his mother. That night, the queen led the princess to the best bedchamber in the palace. She ordered 20 mattresses to be placed on the bed, and on top of them, 20 feather eiderdowns. The princess lay on top of all these and covered herself with silk sheets and the softest woven blankets. And where was the ladder for her to get to the top of this? Next morning, the queen asked her guest how she had slept. I'm sorry to say I didn't sleep a wink she said. There was something very hard under the mattress. Then the queen knew she had found a bride for her son, for she had placed a pea under the bottom mattress, and only a real princess would have been delicate and sensitive enough to feel it. Okay, whoa! Wow, looking at that particular story through modern eyes, especially the whole, must be delicate to be a real princess, oh wow! Because mm -hmm. real princesses nowadays can kick your tail. Mm -hmm. So, wow. Yeah, this is why you usually don't see this one remade. Because, <laughs> seriously? Yeah, also another thing. I always thought it was a different type of pea when I've heard the story before. Then I realized, oh no, it's a pea as in the thing you eat. Yeah. Okay, and yet another classic fairy tale, this time contributed to Southie because, you know, breaking and entering always makes for a good children's story. Goldilocks and the Three Bears There was once a nosy little girl called Goldilocks. One day she found a cottage in the woods, and because it was empty and she really was very nosy, she decided to go in. Inside, she found three bowls of porridge on the table. She tasted the first, but it was too hot. She tasted the second, but it was too cold. She tasted the third, and it was just right. So she ate it all. There were three chairs round the table. She sat on one, but it was too high. She sat on the second, but it was too wide. So she sat on the third, and it broke into little pieces. I think I'll take a rest, said Goldilocks, and she went upstairs to bed. The first bed was too hard, the second too soft, but the smallest was just right, and she fell asleep on it. Just then, the bears who owned the cottage returned. Father and Mother Bear were shocked, and the littlest bear cried, Someone's eaten all my porridge, and that someone has broken my chair. The bears went upstairs and found Goldilocks fast asleep on the littlest bear's bed. She woke up and was so frightened that she ran home and was never, ever nosy again. I, I think the moral of this story is don't be nosy. Also, breaking and entering, theft. Yeah. 
destruction of personal property. Yep. Yeah, I think I could do all three of these images. More craziness, hmm? Mm-hmm. And this has been another thrilling installment of Bedtime Tales by Linda Jennings, illustrated by Hilda Offen. Thanks again for listening. If this book is still in print, we'll try to have a link for you. Uh, since this is Ember's reading room, there's links for Ebates because I can. And hey, it's almost Christmas. You still have shopping left, right? Uh, Amazon and Ebates are not affiliated with sponsors of or in any way involved with Ember's Reading Room or any content on the Lux Analysis channel. Okay, we can't even get monetized on YouTube. You think they're going to pay attention to us? Thanks again for listening. <laughs>